Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we got a new product from RunCam. It's the Thumb Pro 4K action camera. I'm Jeff with Tide FPV. You're going to acquire some knowledge today. Let's get this guy unboxed and see what we get. All right, looks like it comes nicely packaged. Now this camera is much larger than the original Thumb. Uh, it only did 1080p, 50 frames per second, I believe. I went ahead and passed on that one because the specs were too similar to the Insta360 Go, the original one. I was looking for an upgrade for something in this form factor. Now it does come with uh, replaceable ND filters. Uh, if you choose to get that package, that's gonna be 99 US dollars. I added the additional set because the set wasn't in stock. So if you want to purchase them separately, they are uh, 15 US dollars. And that comes with an ND8, 16, and 32, I believe. So uh, this piece just snaps off and uh, you can put your ND filter on there. Let's see what else we get. All right, looks like some documentation and maybe a quick setup guide. This also uses RunCam's app. Uh, if you're familiar with the Runcam 5 or the 5 Orange, um, you can use the app to set up this camera. We'll go over that here in a second. But here's the quick start guide. See what other accessories comes in the box. Looks like we've got the sync cable. This is micro USB. Uh, this doesn't have an internal battery. You're gonna have to connect this to your five volt pad. Don't connect this to uh, battery voltage, even if you're using a 1S craft because it needs at least five volts. So. Connect it to a five volt pad. It'd be nice to see them including USB-C, but that's not a deal breaker. All right, looks like you're gonna get this mount, a TPU printed mount. I don't know specifically what this is designed for. Some M2 screws to mount the TPU print. This is gonna be a four pin power cable. The difference from the original thumb you're getting uh, an RXTX so you can control, you can start stop the recording from your uh, flight controller if you got that set up. And you got a ground and a five volt pad as well. All right, let's get a weight. The Thumb Pro by itself. It's coming in at 16.2 grams. In comparison, the previous option for micros was this Insta360 Go. Now this is the original one. Keep in mind that this does have an internal battery. That one's coming in at 18.7 grams. So um, about two and a half gram difference uh, with Thumb Pro. Now uh, the ND filter doesn't add any extra weight because uh, it just is replaceable with the original lens. So you just twist it and you're able to uh, attach the ND filter. So that's a good good feature. And what I did end up flying this on was this Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. It's pretty light anyway. So that's coming in without the camera, about 60 and a half grams. And then I flew it on these uh, GNB 2S 300s. So we're looking at about 80 grams and the camera itself along with the wiring harness is about 96 grams so under 100 grams all up weight i think that's pretty impressive uh, to get some uh, 4k 30 or 2.7k 60 frames per second footage so price for performance i can definitely recommend this now most retailers have been sold out i did see that Power Drone and Get FPV do have stock. I'll post those links in the video description if you want to check them out. This does have a built in gyro, so you can run the footage through gyro flow to get stabilized footage. Now, it doesn't have built in stabilization like the Insta360 Go, Go2, and Cadex Peanut do have. But uh, with gyro flow, if you get your settings right, stay tuned to the channel. I'll post an update video on gyro flow 1.1. The latest version, they've updated the GUI. It's much easier to use than previous iterations. So look forward to that coming soon to the channel. And I got some pretty stable footage you'll see. I'll post a comparison here. Uh, unstabilized versus stabilized. 
I am running a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Mine is a U3 rated card, so uh, make sure that you get a card that's rated for 4K video. I found that the Thumb Pro performed best uh, with uh, 2.7K 60 frames per second. I do believe that Runcam is going to have an option uh, in future firmware updates to support 4x3 mode in 1440p like the Runcam 5 orange look forward to that update i didn't update this one it came out of the box with i believe the most recent firmware it does export the uh, gyro data file so you don't have to worry about that gyro flow will pick that up automatically some things that come to mind you probably will want to pick up another one of these cables it's a four pin cable i don't know the size specifically i just put some heat shrink on this one because uh, I'm not running the uh, TX and RX wires to control the start-stop on the flight controller. I just wired this up to an open 5-volt and ground pad on my uh, all-in-one. But if you're going to run this on different quads, you will want to uh, get multiple cables to solder up. Another option that I thought about was adding a, a, a Beck on there so I could just run it off the balance lead. I may do that. I'll post an update video if I choose to do that. But remember, this camera only can take up to 5 volts. So if you run this on a 2S LiPo or above, you're going to fry the camera. Besides the Insta360 Go 1 and 2 and the uh, Cadex Peanut, I'd say this also competes with a Naked GoPro. Uh, Naked GoPro is going to be on the higher end. You could also take a look at this camera. You could run this on a five inch easily, if, uh, but uh, for bando bashing and freestyling, if you do a lot of aggressive flying, uh, you know, you're gonna destroy this camera. I haven't seen any TPU mounts for this one yet. I believe they have a few for the original thumb. It's lightweight, but I don't know how much of a beating it's gonna take compared to, uh, you know, like your typical run cam orange or a GoPro. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about just purchasing this as your primary camera for freestyle. I don't know if that's gonna be a good option. This is gonna be my go-to for micros, definitely. But I mean, you can use it how you see fit. So for me, uh, the question is, is this camera worth it? Uh, it definitely is. Kinda hesitated on picking this one up. I knew it would be a hot item. I've seen a lot of hype. A lot of people talked about doing a pre-order. Uh, I'm just not about that life. I'm not going to do a pre-order and have it shipped from China. So I was waiting for one of our local retailers here in the U.S. to pick the cameras up. Sure enough, Defiance RC got some in stock and I ordered immediately. They're out of stock currently, but I will post a link to the other U.S. vendors. Take a look there in the video description for those, as well as I'll post a link for this mount for the Tiny Hawk Freestyle as well. Enjoy the footage, guys. I hope this video was informative. Remember, if you're not already sub, go ahead and please do so. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can.